Item six is leaders' questions. The first question is from Councillor Hogg to the leader. Uh, question number one to the leader. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, may I just welcome you, Mr. Mayor, on your first council meeting and wish you well for the rest of this municipal year. I hope uh, we won't give you too tough a time, uh, and I know that you will be fair in your judgments when you have to make those. But turning to Councillor uh, Hogg's question, um, I think uh, the point about the sprinklers and, and the issue of cladding, well, we want to deal with this as quickly as possible. Um, but we also want to deal with it as properly as possible. What I'd like to take the opportunity to also say is that generally that it is important that the industry that will go around this particular issue of safety needs to uh, be resilient in terms of supply chains and be consistent and be also aware that they need to, uh, to, to give us high standards of both quality of materials as well as uh, installation of those things. And they need to be also aware that if there were to be inflating prices, the society will not forgive them. So this is an important thing for, for us to put out as a message uh, from here and elsewhere too. I think um, um, Councillor Ogg asks about the funding opportunities. Uh, clearly, if there are any, we would want those. Um, but at the moment, the 30 million is, is, is being something that we will provide ourselves. And if necessary, uh, we will recoup it from the government. As far as safety in our state and our buildings is concerned, it is our job, but it is everyone's job. It is the job of everyone who lives in there to be aware that they need to play their own role in making sure that they look after themselves, that they do not wedge open fire safety doors and all of those things. And I think it's, it's a, it's a wake-up call for all of us. And finally, the, the final part of the question refers to this gas rises. And I have had reports from the Director of Housing on this, and I have to say that it is not a very good situation, and this is one that on which I intend to write to the head of Ofcom to say that they have a duty not only just to regulate the sort of prices and things, but they need to, re to regulate the quality of service they provide. And I wonder whether the quality of service they provide to the public sector is different from the quality they provide to the other sectors. And so that is one of those points that I do intend to raise in my letter to, to Ofcom. Supplementary question? Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you very much. Thank the leader for that full answer and, and welcome, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm sure I join with all councillors in noting uh, how dreadful uh, this disaster was and extending you know, our sympathy, but also whatever help we can to the families affected by it. Um, and I join the Mayor in, in thanking Wandsworth staff as well, uh, those who've, who've served in Kensington and Chelsea, but I think also the Chief Executive and the Director of Housing in particular immediately seemed to sort of grip the scale of, of the situation. Um, and, and thanks also to the councillors who've been out and listened to residents in, in our own tower blocks. And, you know, we, we have more than 100 blocks, more, more than anywhere else in London. So I think we have an unprecedented challenge. It raises issues about well, tower blocks in particular, social housing in general, and of course our role as councillors. And um, we agree with the steps, support the steps the council has taken so far in terms of committing to retrofit sprinklers to reclad the affected blocks um, and you know uh, I hope all councillors actually will join this side in scrutinising carefully those measures because uh, that has to be one of the lessons uh, that we learn from this disaster so I, I thank the leader for the information uh, and uh, can he commit to keep all councillors involved at all stages as we go forward uh, Thank Councillor Hogg for his supplementary, I absolutely do. And I think it is important to see this as a, a kind of council-wide responsibility. It is not just mine, but it is everyone's. And it is not just members, but it is that of officers. And it is not just members and officers, but it is the community as a whole needs to embrace the kind of need to be vigilant and need to be safe and need to feel that others feel safe. Second supplementary. Councillor Mrs. Dunn. Will the leader join with me in thanking council officers for getting a letter out so quickly to residents of blocks across the borough. I work with someone in their 20s who lives in such a block who received a letter within 24 hours and was much reassured by the contents of that letter. But also I would like to urge colleagues to um, work on their communication skills because I think it is up to us to make sure that we communicate well with residents so that they know that we as Wandsworth Council, as Wandsworth Council 
are looking into these matters and we're resolving them and so that we don't have such a Grenfell Tower incident in our own borough. Um, I thank Councillor Dunn for our supplement. Yes, of course, I mean, council officers have uh, reacted with in, in remarkable speed, agility, and actually sort of deep felt knowledge of the estates and the community that they serve day in, day out. Um, and I think, I think it also goes to say that uh, the, the, the community has responded uh, uh, with, with care and regard to them as well. Question two to the leader. I thank Councillor Hogg for his supplement, uh, question rather, uh, and it's interesting that in his question he, he raises, um, it refers to the paper 17171. Mr. Mayor, that paper of course um, talks about my challenge to the department to go and look for as much land and resources possible to deliver more homes than, than they have hitherto been able to. And I think I said of the committee, the challenge was for them to reach for the sky and let's see how far they get. And I thought that this was a very firm and clear challenge and a very firm and clear indication that this council is determined to deliver as much affordable housing as possible. To my great regret, because the Labour Party didn't support that, and, and, and so be it. But let me, let me then turn to the other bit of, the estate, uh, of this question. The, the delivery of affordable homes from, cancer, from developments is got to be seen in the round with the other things that development brings. And of course, the answer, printed answer talks about Northern Line Extension and so on. Northern Line Extension unlocked an enormous opportunity without which nothing else would have happened. And I think that is a point that needs to be remembered. And as for the 9%, well, it is not such a uniquely different figure. The, again, we talk, uh, we, we, the, the answer points out to the next, next door borough of Merton, where 9% is what was ap approved as being acceptable. And of course, in Haygate, 3% was approved as being acceptable. These are not easy decisions to make for us or the authorities about which I talk, or indeed the mayor. But they are all rooted in the viability of a development. And I think it is important to take cognizance of the fact that whilst we deliver homes in this country through the use of the viability uh, of a development, then there will be situations which may not please everyone. Uh, supplementary? Well, I mean, I think we have found an issue where there's, there's a clear divide between the two parties here. I mean, he really does seem to think he's got a good deal at Battersea Power Station. I mean, does he recognize the public's anger that a company can come into our community make more than £1,000 million in profit and not live up to even their most basic commitment to deliver homes that local people can afford? Does he accept that on his watch, Nine Elms has become a byword for greed and insecurity, for putting the public interest behind the interests of property developers and overseas investors? He even disputes that these 250 homes have been cut when such an independent arbiter as BNP Paribas have said it is very unlikely that they will ever materialize. There isn't an upside for the council from this deal. In fact, can he tell the council if he knows a single local family who will get to live in the Battersea Power Station development? Well, I thank Councillor Hoffman's supplement. I do know, I do indeed know, that not in so much Battersea Power Station because I have not met many people there yet, um, but there are occupiers, um, and I am due to be invited to, to meet the residents. But I have met residents in the neighboring development at Embassy Gardens and at River Light, and indeed there are people on shared ownership products as well as others who are, in fact, for what, ones of the residents, and in case of one, in fact, a, an employee of, a, of public sector in this borough. So it's not actually as bad as he points out to be. The figure of 100,000, uh, 1,000 million figure that he quotes, of course, is a 2008 viability submitted by Treasury Holdings. And of course it is a viability which uh, predicted that, well, it was predicated on the basis that they were going to make 25% uh, IRR returns on their investment. And of course what happened to Treasury Holdings was nothing. So in fact it was nothing of nothing that they promised and nothing of nothing is what they delivered. As for what Nine Elms has delivered, 
Yes, there are critics of nine arms, and indeed there are, there'll be critics of any regeneration scheme elsewhere. But let me turn, ask him to, to, to look at uh, what an authority of his own persuasion in Haringey has delivered in the case of the uh, Haringey Town Hall. A building in their own ownership sold with four affordable housing units to be delivered instead of what the local community want. I'm not criticizing that authority. What I am criticizing is the mayor stood up last, May, last December and said, I can't do anything about it. I understand the situation there is. It is time that actually fairness to cross authorities is what is applied by City Hall. Councillor Mrs. Cooper. Uh, can the leader reassure members that we are pri prioritizing the record levels of affordable housing being developed for local residents and workers? In, 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 the, in the housing uh, OSC. Well, this council has committed itself to regenerating two estates where it will deliver not only homes for people who live there, but in fact more homes which will be available for social rent. There will also be more homes for shared ownership for people who live and who have made their lives in their homes. Sons and daughters of people who have made their lives in those estates will also have a chance. This is the only council that is actually generally going to add more than there was at the start of a regeneration project. In fact, you know, I have to say that every local authority must, must make its own decision, and I'm not going to be critical about how they make their decision. But what I do know is that we have delivered, or we are pledged to deliver, actually more than we start with. Similarly, in the paper 17171, it talks about the 260 units we are developing uh, over 22 sites, and in fact, we will deliver more. And some of our hidden homes program, it copied by other boroughs, it has also delivered homes that were, you know, that are lived in by, by ones of people. So this council is shouldering as much of the weight as it can, but of course imploring the others. My view is that if every authority in London did as much as we are doing in delivering affordable homes on its own land, using its own resources, the mayor would be about a third into delivering his 90,000 units that he's promised. <coughs> Question three, uh, standing in the name of Councillor Peterkin, Councillor Sutters. Councillor Sutters, uh, uh, question number three to the leader. I thank Councillor Sutters for, uh, for a question on behalf of Councillor Peterkin. I think um, Councillor Hogg's mentioned it and others have uh, by the contribution of, uh, of our staff. What I just want to focus in here is, is this idea that uh, there is a crisis in local government across the piece. I think it is a false thing to think about that. I don't think anyone wins by traducing the reputation of local authorities across the land. Local authorities have an important role to play. Some do it well, some not so well. But this is not an occasion to traduce those who do well and to, to leave the ones who can't manage well to, 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 the, to the dogs and, and, and capricious press. So it's important that those who make comments on, on, on Grenfell and other shortcomings by local authorities do it in a responsible, measured, measured way. Supplementary? Councillor Sutters. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. I'm very reassured by, by the leader's answer because I must admit that I do have um, some concerns myself. On a wider point, local councillors are classed as volunteers, and it has to be said that we bring an unusual commitment of time, skills, and resources to our role, not seen in other voluntary roles. Does the leader agree that there is a big job to be done now in promoting confidence in, in sitting councillors and in those who would perhaps want to come forward and to reinforce the position of us within our communities? Uh, Councillor Dunn touched on it earlier, but I think it is important and we need to find ways to do it. Would the leader please comment on that? I thank Councillor Satis for her supplementary. In fact, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? I'm sure both parties are currently involved in finding candidates for, for next May's elections, and both parties are probably uh, making sure that they reflect as diverse a population as they can and new people, give new people opportunities to become councillors. And if 
the press out there is saying that all councillors are good enough for is waking up in the morning and finding new and different ways of making people's life difficult, then I don't think you are going to get many volunteers. So it's important for this system to, 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 to be measured in, in a fair and equitable way. Without that, you know, good and new talent will not come into it and people will be ill-served and, and, and the whole system may actually suffer for it. Um, I'm really surprised that the group opposite needs to ask such a question given the massive cuts the local government has faced and the impossibilities of officers doing their job uh, under, the, under those circumstances. Uh, can the leader defend the massive cuts that so undermine the ability of local government to function adequately? I think um, Councillor Wright could have chosen another question to raise his supplementary which might have been more appropriate. Question four. Question four to the leader. I thank Councillor Stokes for her question and the answer sort of uh, set out in detail there two, two bits I'd like to just uh, uh, point to Mr. Mayor. At the start of this thing I remember Councillor Ellis um, giving examples of where how other local authorities had harnessed the goodwill of the community and the faith groups and so on to, to provide facilities and homes for Syrian refugees and indeed others. And uh, clearly that is what we did and we don't seem to have succeeded as much as uh, other, other authorities seem to have. But we remain willing and we remain willing to, to, to uh, you know, assess any offer that comes and, and, and f do a match between a willing family and a willing person. I think also, Mr. Mayor, it's worth reflecting that in the last four weeks we have seen the situation post Grenfell where the pressure on London housing has made the response to Grenfell more difficult. And so we need to actually see all of the pressures on housing in their con respective contexts. Uh, each one is important, each one is a competing pressure, and, and they all have to be seen in such a way that we don't make some people feel that their, their, their needs are greater than others. Um, I thank the leader for his response. However, I'm deeply disappointed to hear that Wandsworth has only managed to help one family to date. Um, I'm sure that the leader will agree with me that this number compares pitifully with the more than 5 million Syrians who've been forced from their homes and from their countries since the conflict began. The 1.2 million Syrian refugees who are in Europe seeking safety and even the 20,000 Syrians that the government has committed to resettle in the UK by 2020 as part of this programme. Um, I'm glad to hear that a review is underway and noting that's the case, can I confirm that this review will explore measures to incentivise private landlords um, to take in Syrian refugee families um, and consider a, having a level playing field than the measures currently in place uh, for landlords who are uh, providing homes for the homeless? And can the review also look at what other local authorities are doing, particularly other London boroughs that have higher um, resettlement rates so far. Um, and finally, will the leader press the government to do more to help identify and support unaccompanied children currently in camps in Italy and Greece who are eligible for resettlement in the UK and being reu reunited with their families? Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank um, Councillor McDonnell for her uh, stroke, sorry, for, for, for her, her supplementary. Uh, my colleague, Councillor Sally, has obviously heard w her request for the review, and I'm sure she will reflect those uh, wants in, in the review when that comes through. Can I just say, I mean, in a, the refugee crisis in the Middle East um, multiplied yesterday, or was it day before, when Mosul was freed, and clearly there is a, there is a, a crisis of biblical and maybe super biblical proportion out there. And yes, there is. I mean, I'm not uh, in a, averse to the conditions that people face and the need to reach out and help. Uh, and of course, what we've said from the very beginning, that this is not a job for just one person, this is a job for an entire community to reach out and help. And yes, if, if there are ways of incentivizing private landlords to come up, and deliver, her, deliver houses that might be suitable for, for, for a Syrian refugee family, why not? We would be happy to look at. And I'm sure Councillor Salia will take those on board. Councillor Clay.
I think um, Councillor Clare makes a, a, an interesting point. I mean, in a sense, in, 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 in the sense, in the in the sense, in Mr. Ma Mr. Mayor, councillors, please, would you allow the leader to answer the question, Council? Thank you. I think. I think. Thank you, councillors. Mr. Mayor, this is. Um, it, you know, this is. This is a, a difficult situation, isn't it? And 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 and, and it, it's always easier to make politics out of it. Uh, but to be fair, to be fair, you know, there are people out there who might say that a Syrian refugee family will have needs and wants that I, as a landlord, am not prepared to provide for or whatever. So I think there is an education to be done about saying that there are families that are well adjusted and willing to be just uh, m mucking and become part of the society without becoming terribly demanding. So there are those things to be done too. But I think it is important to acknowledge that the contribution that this particular landlord has made to this particular family, and I know the circumstances uh, about around his offer of help, uh, and, and it is actually a very heartfelt offer he has made, and he's reached out in, in a very fulsome way. And I think it is something worth celebrating and recognising. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Gavinia. Uh, the time for questions to the leader has passed.